Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will talk about immunity. So let us see what is immunity. Now immunity is the ability of an organism to fight the disease causing organisms. So by now we saw that there are a set of organisms which are capable of causing disease and they are called pathogens. But inside our body also we have a mechanism which fights these disease causing organisms in order to protect our body. So that is known as immunity and this entire system of our body which contains all the different organs which together fight infection that is called the immune system. So now we are going to talk about that. Now when we talk about immunity you just think of it in this way. Let us suppose when you have a big house so all your uh, valuables and everything is present inside this house and you want to protect them. So how do you protect them? By keeping security guards outside your house. So what is the purpose or what is the job of these security guards to protect your house? So what is the house? House is our body and we want to protect our body from any disease causing organisms. And who gives immunity to our body? The immune system. There are several organs which, part, which are part of the immune system. And this immune system acts as the security guards. Okay. And protection is given against whom? Like in this case, the protection is given against a thief. So this thief is nothing but the disease causing organisms. That is the pathogens. So immunity is that ability now for organisms or for human beings who have got a very strong immune system they will not get easily attacked by all these microorganisms but those who have a very weak immune system they will be more prone to uh, common cold or fever or all these things because their immune system is not strong enough so as the stronger is the security system in your house the lesser chance is that a theft can happen in your house but the weaker the security system the more chances that a theft will happen so the very similar way it is true for our immune system as well now when we talk about the types of immunity there are broadly two types of immunity that is innate immunity and acquired immunity so what do we mean by each of them now innate the word innate means inborn so this is that type of immunity which is present inside our body by birth so it is inborn immunity so when a small baby is born this that baby also has some immunity inside its body that even if some small germs or something attacks it the body will be able, able to fight against it so that type of immunity is called uh, inborn immunity the other type of immunity is immunity which is acquired after birth so how is immunity acquired so when you talk about immunity being acquired it means that some sort of uh, medicines i mean they are not exactly medicines but some sort of substances are introduced inside your body which provides immunity to your body now what are those substances how they provide immunity we will discuss that very soon so but the concept is in acquired immunity it is not present by birth it is it comes inside the body only later in life but innate immunity is something which is present by birth now innate immunity is non-specific defense. So this type of immunity is not against a specific pathogen. So it is in general immunity so that it can protect against all sort of organisms or objects which are perceived as foreign. But when you talk about acquired immunity, it is a pathogen specific defense. That means acquired immunity, maybe immunity is provided to an organism against a specific pathogen. So for example, in case of typhoid, typhoid is caused by a specific pathogen that is Salmonella typhi. Similarly, uh, common cold is caused by a virus. So if your body has acquired immunity, for salmonella typhi that means typhoid will not happen because that can be fought by the uh, immune system but that doesn't mean that uh, it can also fight the viruses so acquired immunity is always against a specific 
uh, pathogen and it is not uh, it, it is not that it can fight with any type of pathogen but in case of innate immunity it is uh, a non-specific defense it is not against a specific defense it can only uh, protect the body from all common sort of infections but it is not very strong it has to develop as the baby grows so first we will talk about innate immunity now in innate immunity there are different barriers which stop entry of unwanted foreign matter inside the body. Now, what are these barriers which we are talking about? Now, it is not necessary that they have to be physical barriers. There are many different types of barriers. So, let us quickly have a look at what are the barriers which stop foreign particles to enter inside our body. First category is a physical barrier. Next is physiological barrier, cellular barrier and finally cytokine barrier. So these are the four types of barriers which together gives innate immunity or inborn immunity to an organism. So let us discuss about each of these types of barriers and let us see how they stop the entry of unwanted substances into the body. So we will first talk about the physical barrier. Physical barrier is something which uh, physically stops the entry of foreign materials. So physical barrier is a skin. So skin is something which is present in our body by birth. So we do not get skin after we are born later. So we are born with a skin. So skin acts as a physical barrier. It stops entry of many substances inside our body. Lining of respiratory, gastrointestinal and urogenital tract. So all these tract, they have a lining of small, small cells which actually act as a barrier to foreign materials. For example, you would have observed that when we breathe in, inside our nostrils, we have small hair-like structures. So what do they do? They prevent the entry of dust or dirt particles inside the uh, nasal passage. So that is how that also acts as a physical barrier. Physiological barrier. What are physiological barriers? These are not physical barriers. They are not basically substances, but they are certain things which are released by some part of our body. For example, stomach acid. The medium inside the stomach is acidic due to the presence of hydrochloric acid. Now, this stomach acid also prevents uh, the microorganisms or pathogens to pre be present inside our body. That's because the microorganisms cannot survive in an acidic medium. So that acts as a physiological barrier. Mouth saliva. So saliva also is a, a watery fluid which is secreted inside the oral cavity. Now this saliva also has a specific pH which is not very suitable for the survival of many pathogens. Tears. The tears, the watery substance which comes out of our eyes and the tears also contain uh, many chemicals which do not favor or which prevent the growth of uh, microorganisms so that means it prevents any sort of infection in our eyes so stomach acid saliva and tears are examples of physiological barriers the third one is the cellular barrier that means there are certain cells which itself act as barriers now some of the cells are leukocytes, monocytes, lymphocytes, macrophages. These are some of the cells which help to fight infections. So these cells in itself, they act as barriers. Cytokine barrier. What are cytokine? These are the substances which are secreted by certain cells of the immune system which affect other cells. Now, the immune system will have certain organs and they release some substances. Now, these substances will have an impact on other cells. So, these are called cytokine. Now, examples are interferons which prevent viral infection in non-infected cells. So, it doesn't allow the virals to infect the normal cells. So, that is how it acts as a barrier. So, these are the different types of barrier and all these things are present inside our body by birth. So, thus, whether you talk about leukocytes, monocytes, lymphocytes or you talk about skin or nasal cavity or gastrointestinal tract lining. So, all these things are present in our body by birth and that is why they all form a part of innate immunity. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.